Hello. We are <laughs> that would happen. Uh, we're back in my car, you guys. Hi. Oh yeah, these are my nails, by the way. I can't believe it's been so long since I've done a vlog, but as you may or may not know, I am very much into reading right now. And I, so I really love reading in the summer. I just, I don't know. I feel very inspired to read in the summertime and like beginning of fall, Halloween time. Thought I would give myself a little challenge of something that I did back in September, which is to read a whole book in one weekend. Crazy, um, but I'm very into watching book vlogs, so how hard could it be to do it? So it is a book that I know nothing about, which is even more fun. It's pretty small. Um, it is a YA like teen book, and I'll explain more once it's time to read, but as you can see, it's kind of sunsetting right now. It's the end of the day Saturday, so I'm kind of late in this, but I'm very motivated, very excited to read. I watched a really dumb horror movie. If you've ever seen the movie It Follows, like, what? What was that? I just wasted so much time watching that movie this afternoon that I need to read a good book. So I'm hoping this will do that. Um, so I'm headed right now to get my favorite dinner because I just think good things will inspire good things, you know? So if I'm enjoying my favorites, I think it'll motivate me to keep reading. So that's what we're gonna do. Y'all, that girl in there was so cute. She was so sweet because I haven't been there in a bit. So I was so confused and I forgot like everything. So she was like, let me refresh you on the sauce. Let me refresh you on whatever. Uh, but yeah, got my poke bowl. I will show you guys when we get home. Okay, so, okay, I don't really know what my hair is doing, but as I said, I got my favorite comfort meal for dinner today, because I have the house to myself. Um, Self-love, baby. Some poke. She mixed it really well, which I appreciate, because I'm really bad at mixing um, stuff like this. Same with like Chipotle, I'm just not good at it. In my poke bowl, I get rice as a base, and then I've learned that I'm a pretty basic girl. I used to try all the different, you know, flavors. I get salmon and tuna and shrimp and like, I only want one thing and it's spicy tuna. So I got spicy tuna all the way with some edamame, some cucumbers, onions, some crispy stuff, jalapenos, and then like this like extra crab stuff on top just to spruce it up a bit. But this, she stuffed this thing. I mean, it was like 15 bucks, so I'm gonna be full, but yeah, I am hyped to eat this. And then we can talk about this book cheers okay so like everyone in the book world i really wanted to watch the summer i turned pretty because it gives me like all the 2000 vibes that i miss in literature in film like we all miss so of course i got the books i only read the first one and i'm pretty on board like it was cheesy but then the show really made me love it more so I'm excited, but I will not fin like keep reading the series until we're closer to the next one coming out because mm -mm, I'm just so sad. Like I need to watch it immediately. So I will not be reading it until next summer. But I was like, it's still summer and I want a book with a similar vibe. Books that had that feel, and I realized that teens just made a display in the library of like summer vibe books. And of course, like the summer I turned pretty was on there. But <laughs> um this one caught my eye. I have never heard of it before. The Great Godin or Godin. It looks super creepy and cool. I love the black and white cover. It's really small. I got 200 something pages, so like doable. And this is what I read on the back. This is the story of one family, one dreamy summer, a summer when everything changes. In a sun-drenched house by the sea, teenage brothers and sisters and older cousins fill the golden days 
with wine and games and planning a wedding. Enter the Godin, irresistible, charming Kit and surly, silent Hugo. Sounds like a little Jeremiah Conrad action, if you ask me. Suddenly there's a serpent in paradise and the consequences will be devastating. I just, I'm very much in love with the Conrad versus Jeremiah and this is great. I'm today because starting books is probably the hardest thing for me. cardigan getting cozy to keep reading um before going to bed and I'm very into it okay so what I can tell you about the book so far is we have finally met our two male characters of Kit who is this charismatic really overly dramatic charming brother and we have Hugo who is the surly Un misunderstood, quiet, introverted. I don't know if I even like either of them. Thing about this book that I have realized, and I had to look it up to make sure of protagonists of this book, their gender and name are never mentioned. And that is so fascinating to me. I had to look it up to make sure, and I like. I felt so crazy. I was like, no way. dream in this beach house last night but yeah I've just been super excited to go back eating my favorite breakfast which is a everything bagel with an egg um <laughs> today it's hard boiled but most of the time it's runny um and we got our book I'm ready to continue here this morning <laughs> I'm already at page 200 and I think there are like 250 pages so there's only this much left um <laughs> I mean I knew I could achieve this but like dang it's getting really good um really really great characters you know like morally and for the first time I really don't like it I've decided I need some caffeine to finish up so I'm gonna go get some coffee. Hey, grande, I smoke a latte. And okay, real talk. Um, I just went on Prime, Amazon Prime Videos, Spotify account because I heard that they made playlists for all the characters. The summer I turned pretty, and Jeremiah's playlist is so telling and also so it's so good and it's the ones that like the actors made themselves of songs that inspired like their character that they listen to whatever conrad's is so sad emo boy like as expected but jeremiah's slaps it's very good Um, I was driving back from Starbucks and they have a freaking little library at this person's house so I went to see but it was all kids books which is expected in this neighborhood like we're near two schools so that's so cute okay I'm back but does anyone else hate when you forget to ask for no whip and then they give you this with this top 
I don't know what it is. Drinking with this top just reminds me of like middle school and I hate it. I don't like it. So I'm gonna drink this up and finish this book, man. I thought I was gonna be here all night. not end at all how I thought oh my god how weird but I finished we're back in my room I have officially finished the great garden um this is a YA teen book there were 245 yeah, 45, 245 pages, and I finished it in literally less than a day because I started it last night, and I finished it this afternoon, so pretty impressive stuff. Also, yes, those are my babies over there. Um, they're just chilling. I am normally not someone who is tempted by TikTok ads. But this one got me, um, and I am like shameless to say that I did buy them for me and my sister and thinking they were weighted little dinosaur stuffed animals because every time I go to Target they're sold out and I was like, oh my god, so cute, and they are not weighted at all. So if anyone has a DIY hack on how to make them weighted, I would love you forever. Okay, moving on. Let's dive right into this book that literally probably no one has read and I am just making this video for myself just to prove that I could do this. Uh, I have rated this book four stars, which on my rankings out of five, that is a pretty high, that's a pretty good score. Um, I can be pretty picky and choosy when it comes to my ratings. Like I could genuinely have one opinion and then those last few chapters can like change that. Let's go over some things that I liked. Number one, I think that what the author did when it comes to the main character not naming their gender or name was really mysterious and added the undertone of like darkness within this summer home because the whole beginning you're like oh this is so cute this whole family and their dynamics with the parents and the cousin and the cousin's boyfriend like it's very cute but they want to remind you like mm, look at this cover like something creepy is going on and you need to like have your radars on and be aware so I was always like waiting for a character to say their name or to say anything about them and they never did which would add it to the mystery and I really loved that so very good job with that the next thing I think is with the competing of characters with the boys that come in introducing new characters is so exciting and especially when it comes to like boys that everyone wants I think it's just a very good plot line and they did it well because they flip-flopped like you they had the one charming brother kit that you are supposed to really like and enjoy because he's super theatrical and dramatic and sweet and charming to everyone. Uh, every member of the family. So you're like, oh, we love him. And Hugo's like the creepy mysterious one who's super isolated and hates Kit. And so you're like, oh, anyone who hates Kit, we don't like. Wrong. So liked that flip of things and introduction of characters i really liked um that we only had to learn some quick facts about all the siblings to really understand them like it goes from the top main character is just unsure of what to do with their lives i personally read it as a female um this might just be because i'm a girl and because that's how i like to perceive like if i had my dream main character so when I started reading this I was like oh this is a girl and it's an older sister and I can totally relate so that's how I read it and I hope other people read it differently because that's the whole point 
So I really enjoyed that character. Then comes the young, the sister under that, which is Maddie. She is super self-conscious and popular, you know, aware of her beauty and insecure of that. And also like wanting boys to date her, but not just because she's pretty. So we get, we understand that character. Um, then there's the little brother. Oh, then there's another sister, which I literally don't know how to pronounce her name, but they call her Tam. And she's like the sporty little sister who loves horses and just being outside. So we love her. She like, there's little incidents that happen with each of these characters, which, um, like they're all pretty well rounded. I don't think it focused on anyone in particular, which is really good. I don't think there was enough detail, but we can talk about that later. Um, and then comes the little brother Alex, which I said already, like he likes bats and bugs and like typical little boy. Um, and then there's Hope, who lives down the street, who's the cousin and her boyfriend Mal, who eventually becomes her fiance. Spoiler. Um, yeah and that's like a really fun thing so the whole rest of the book they're kind of planning that wedding and really excited about it um fun fact you should know about both of those characters that is that they're both actors so they like to use shakespearean language at the dinner table which like dream family goals i really love that pretentiousness you know it's fun um early in the in the book mal gets cast in hamlet and so He's having to like learn all those lines and he's asking all the kids for help, including Kit, because Kit's mom is an actress and she's off filming some things, but of course he wants to be an actor. So he and Mal start getting along because he's like, oh, I'm a really good actor, so I should be the one helping you with your lines. And you're like, okay, dude. Um, personally, I always choose broody characters. So Kit was always on my radar, but I was like, I don't actually think I like him. And I was right. When things come to light about Kit's character, um, we learn he's kind of like not a good guy. It's just not enough detail that you're like, wait, like, are we okay with this? I don't know. I personally am not okay with the things he was doing. And it became quite clear to me where this story was going. So that's just because of, I don't know, I caught that right away. But I just feel like everything was still unsaid and I don't like that in a book that they're just gonna let things like that go. I don't think that's a good message to be sending is like, oh yeah, we still keep things like this secret. Like no one in the family knows really. It's like hush hush. Like, no, this is a book for teens. You should be teaching them to like speak up for themselves and say things like that and to out people who are doing bad things. So as far as dislikes, I think this book was pretty vague. Like that's all I'm gonna say. I feel like because it was so short and there were so many characters that I felt like I was I was in that beach house. I was just a fly on a wall in that beach house. And like I could kind of hear conversations and kind of understand, but I was never fully there. So I don't love that. Maybe it's because I read a, this book so fast. I've never read a book so fast, but I like to dive in and to like, there are books where I can read, dive in, imagine a whole world, like what everything tastes like, looks like, smells like, and then go to sleep and still think about it. Um, this book is not that for me because it, it was all really foggy. Everything was like through a foggy window. So that's just my take on it. Um, so I, I wish there was a little more detail, but I understand in a small book like that, it's not possible. But her writing style is so good. For a YA book, I have not read such a detailed, like gorgeous writing like this in forever. And that's something that um, a lot of these rom-coms don't do. I wouldn't say this is a rom-com. This is definitely just literary fiction, which I love. And I've been only reading adult lately, which can get really like draggy and boring. So a YA literary fiction is like the way to go. Um, another dislike, that I have for this book. I definitely guess the ending. There's something that happened. There's like this big sailing trip um, that's like a huge turning point in the book and characters change after it and their relationship to each other changes and it and the people who go on this fishing trip or sailing boat trip are Mal, Hope's fiance, and Kit, the little like teenage kid who both are into theater and whatever and the dad 
Um, our main character's dad was supposed to go on the trip, but he got busy with work and so he didn't go. It's a trip only for boys, so also misogynistic. Why do only the boys get to go on this sailing trip? Like, <sighs> I don't know. If this book was written early 2000s, I would let it slide. Even then! Okay, I don't know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there's a lot of things that could have changed in this book, and that scene was so powerful and super vague that you're like, what happened? But I predicted it. So I predicted that ending like way early that you can see my reaction when I saw it. Like, I saw it coming, but I just didn't think that would be the ending of the book. The ending of the book is like way later in the future and our main character like runs into different people from this summer and they like talk about things but everything's still left super unresolved and unsaid. There are actually lots of theories and like articles written about what ending explained because I'm gonna read you guys the last words from this book. You still think of that face and those hands and a voice telling me that I'm something else. And more and more, I think that maybe he was right. But like, is that a positive ending? Like maybe he was right, like I am worth something or like something else, I don't know. And I read the book and I couldn't even tell you. So that was my video. That was my take on my first ever like weekend read. Hopefully next time I'll try and read like one or two books. Um, maybe I'll go for like 24 actual hours of reading and see how far I can get. I don't know. Um, I'm really excited to start this booktube journey. I do have a bookstagram that I've had for almost a year and I really enjoy it and I thought why don't I merge my two um, passions together. It makes it much easier for me uh, to promote one while doing the other. So when I'm not doing my travel videos, I'm thinking of bringing some book stuff to light. Um, I've officially hit 30 books, so, and it's only been six months into the year, so. I know, crazy, I'm really proud of how far I've come in my re reading journey, and like videos like this help me and encourage me and inspire me to read, and also help me like navigate, maybe I shouldn't actually pick that one up. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time, bye.